friends, welcome. We gather today in difficult circumstances as we come to terms with Ron's death. As we gather with our memories and as we unite our hearts in sadness. Today we will remember wherever we are, whether here in Holy Trinity Church in Mapperley or online wherever we are in the world. We might cry. I'm sure we will laugh. We might even learn a thing or two about Ron. Now we've invited you to share some of your memories of Ron with the family, either by completing a card if you're here in church with us, or if you're watching us online, then you can fill in an online memory card at lanarkgreyfriars.com forward slash memory. And like all good reality shows, there's a link somewhere underneath me on the screen. But once you do complete that, it's passed to the family and they'll be able to think about how you gather to remember Ron today. Now, also, if you're here in church, coming from Scotland, this is a little bit of a novelty for me, where, you know, it's warm enough to melt ice. Um, so, if you are feeling at all warm, then please keep waving your order of service. If you do need to go outside, then please do, uh, but please just be as comfortable as you can. The same goes for when we sing our hymns as well. If you feel you're able to stand, then please do. Equally, if you're more comfortable being seated, then please be as comfortable as you can. But today, through God the Spirit, we are united. Through the love of God the Father, we are bound together as one. And through the death and resurrection of God the Son, we are held in the palm of his hand. Today is different, but today is unique as today is the day that we give thanks for Ron, for his life, for his love, for his inspiration, and for his place in your family. <clears throat> Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, out of darkness you brought light, and out of emptiness you brought life. And we come together today looking for your light in the darkness of Ron's death, and trusting in your promise that all light continues in you. We know even more now, as we feel such pain and loss, just how much Ron as a family member or a friend or a colleague was part of the happiness of our days. And we seek your comfort where hearts are aching and pain is real. We know that you are the God of all, and yet in the mystery of death, we turn to you with our questions, and we seek to know your peace, trusting that Ron has found his peace in you. In the twists and turns of life, you have been with Ron, and you've been with us, and so now, we simply draw close to you and to each other, bringing our thoughts and our memories. So comfort us, we pray, for as we have loved Ron, so you have loved him too. Amen. Let's now <coughs> join together in singing the first hymn, Morning Has Broken. The words will be on the screen, and, and you'll I'm sure they'll be on the screen of those who are watching online, uh, wherever. So, morning has broken.
it is a joy for me to have been asked to come and read the words of the book of Revelation in memory of Ron, in whose company I was just a few weeks ago. So Revelation in chapter 21, the first seven verses. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the, from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of water of life. Those who conquer will inherit those things, and I will be their God and they will be my children. Thanks be to God. Amen. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. It's the parable of the sheep and the goats. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate peoples one from another as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, and gave you food, or thirsty, and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger, and welcomed you? or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you who are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of these of least, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Thanks both for these readings. Now these readings were picked because... In part, we had a look, Jim and I, when we were looking for some readings and tried to think of some of the parts of Ron's life that, that could be characterised, his passion for social justice, for change, for making our society, our communities a little bit better for those who were living in them, the way that he taught people and encouraged people throughout their lives. And through the service today, hopefully you'll see little bits of Ron that you can remember, that you can hold your own memories of today.
together um, today. But you know, sometimes remembering can be difficult. And sometimes remembering can be painful. Because sometimes when we remember, we remember the good times, the times that made us smile and laugh. And sometimes we can remember the difficult times, times that make us cry or times that, that hurt. And all those ways that we remember are really important. And I wanted to say just a little bit to, to some of um, our, our young folks who are here today because you've got very special memories of Papa, haven't you? Whether it's going um, to the football or going for walks or just annoying them. There's lots of ways that you can remember Papa. And, and you know, every single way that you do that is right. Because whether you remember that photo that was taken or whether you remember some of the other photos that are there, the important thing is with your memories, with the things that you've got, Papa's always with you. And I know sometimes that can feel quite difficult at a time like this, when we, we can't see him like we would maybe have seen him in the, the next room or we can't phone him and, and listen to his voice. But we've always got those memories. And I want you to do something for me today. Now, lots of people have already asked what this table is because it's not normal, even in the Church of Scotland, to have a table of buttons at the front of a church. But, you know, buttons are really quite interesting because buttons come in all different shapes and sizes and colors and um, they, they symbolize different things. Now, let's think here. Oh, now, here's, here's a button that's kind of a bit old and leathery and full of cut. Yes, just like me. Thank you, whoever said that. I did hear you. But, you know, that sometimes that might remind you. Or... What have we got here? Oh, there's, there's, there's a really shiny one. And sometimes you might think of someone as just being the brightest light in your life or somebody that's always going to be there for you. Or there's, um, there's butterflies. There's, there's, oh, there's little dogs as well. There's love hearts. Now, what I would like you to do, if you're a young person, okay, you get the first shot at this. I want you to come up at some point and it can be now, it can be at the end of the service, it can be whenever. And I want you to look through this table of buttons. And I want you to think of what one reminds you of Papa. Okay? Now, it might well be that it's something that you did together. It might well be there's one that looks like a football or, or one that looks like a bike. It could be all sorts of things. And I want you to take it home with you. And I want you to keep it in your pocket or keep it in a drawer. Keep it somewhere where you know where it is. So that when you need to remember Papa, you can go and you can put your hand in your pocket or you can open your drawer and you can look at that thing that you picked today. And you can always remember this point. You can always remember the memories that Papa leaves behind. And you know that he's always with you. So anyone else that would like to come forward at some point at the end of the service, please feel free, look through buttons. There are hundreds, it's fine. If you're watching online, sorry, um, the, the postal budget doesn't quite stretch. However, we are still going to give you something that you can remember Ron with. Now, can any of you tell me something that your papa taught you? Just think, is there one thing that your papa taught you? Hmm, is that a difficult question? Okay, think about, were there any specific bits of music that your papa liked to dance to and teach you how to, you know, <laughs> teach you how to, your eyes just gave it away there, okay? <coughs> Do you know what's about to happen? No? Can you think about what you were thinking in your head? Um, um. No, you can't even <laughs> say it. Is it too embarrassing even to say? Okay. 
Does anyone know something that Papa used to teach? It goes a bit like, oh, oh, prayer. The Macarena? The Macarena. Now, no, I mean, we would never have the Macarena in church, would we? No. No, I certainly wouldn't as a Church of Scotland minister have the Macarena in a Church of England congregation. I'd never be allowed back. That wouldn't happen, would it? No, well, it's going to. Um, so <laughs> what we're actually going to do is we're all going to do Ron's party piece, the thing that he liked to teach you. So, Freya, can you remember how it goes? Right, out you come then. Okay. It's, uh, does anyone want to come and help Freya? Nico, do you want to come out? No? No, any of the right, out you come, out you come. Okay, right, stand there. Right, let, let, so show everyone what they need to do first. So what's the first move? It's <laughs> It's something like that. Right, are we ready? So what we're going to do is I invite everyone to stand up, okay? If you are at home watching this chaos unfold, <laughs> then join in wherever you are. And let's all together have some fun and remember Ron as we all do the Macarena. Are we ready? Oh, please, get into it already, already. Okay. Right. Oh, ready? Right, here we go. Okay. Oh, I'm hopeless at this. I'm hopeless. Clearly, you're all hopeless as well, but we're going to come to it in a minute. Okay. I'm One last time, here we go. What was I supposed to do? In fact, I think what we'll do is we'll all sit down just now, okay? Because I think we've done, we've probably done enough of the Macarena right now for, for me and for my brain. Well done, round of applause for everyone who's doing excellent. Now, what's very clear from that is that Ron's work still goes on. Um, <laughs> And there's a lot of people he didn't quite get round with his Macarena tutorial. Um, so your homework for the next family gathering, for the next party you're all at, is no one's allowed in unless they can demonstrate the full Macarena at the door um, on entry. But it just goes to show, doesn't it, that when we remember someone, we can remember all the things that happened, all the things that they've done, and all the ways that they've taught us. And we can do it even on a day like this, which is really difficult, and for all of us, it's very sad, we can do it with a smile. Because I'm sure that's what Ron, that's what Papa would have wanted to do. For you to smile, for you to remember, for you to laugh, and for you to always behave like you've always behaved, well, a little bit better than you've always <laughs> behaved. But always behave just as you are. So during the service, at the end, come up and take a button, take it home, so that you've got a remembrance of this day, and that you can hold it in your pocket, and you can remember, remember Papa. We're going to hear a poem now, and this is The Praise of a Man. This feels quite hard, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Ron and I were very keen on poetry, and the very first gift he gave me was a book of poetry. 
No, it wasn't romantic cheeks and green sonnets or anything like that. We were in a by-election in Glasgow Central. <laughs> Not a rewarding experience, um, if you were a liberal. And um, he brought me a book of poetry called Noise and Smoky Breath, which he announced was an excellent, succinct description of both Glasgow and me. <laughs> One of the poets that we particularly liked was a guy called Norman McCabe. And this is what Norman McCabe had to say in praise of a man. He went through a company like a lamplighter. See the dull minds, one after another, begin to glow, to shed a beneficent light. He went through a company like a knife grinder. See the dull minds, scattering sparks of themselves, becoming razory, becoming useful. He went through a company as himself, but now he's one of the multitudinous company of the dead, where there are no individuals. The beneficent lights dim, but don't vanish. The razory edges dull, but still cut. He's gone, but you can see his tracks still in the snow of the world. Ron's brother Gordon will now talk about Ron's early life. Ronald uh, was my brother and I loved him. Uh, but to be honest, our early relationship would belie such a sentiment. I think that my arrival after three years of him ruling loose in our little family came as a bit of a shock. I think basically he would have rather had another teddy bear or maybe a puppy. <laughs> and indeed, I, as I grew older, there were times when I, uh, as we say, could have seen him far enough. Uh, and yet there was always a connection. Ronald and his best friend, Christopher Mallon, um, who just lived down the road from us, very close, and between them they visited upon their younger siblings with casual disdain, I should put it, which was unremarkable at the time. Chris remained a lifelong friend, his best friend, I would say, and sadly he died just this April. But at the funeral, Ronald recognised the imposition upon myself and Chris's younger sister, Sheila, who is, who is here today, and there was a kind of recognition and an apology. It's just a shame I wasn't there to hear it. <laughs> And yet I also remember very much the good times. When we were away on family holidays, we could really be thick as thieves, though he did get annoyed that people used to think that I was the older brother, even though I was shorter. Um, we would go looking for adventures, very much like the famous five, but uh, without the overt xenophobia. Uh, <laughs> Ronald also had an immense uh, imagination. Now, he turned to many projects in which I helped him on the more practical matters, cutting things out, putting things together, and so on. Uh, he produced a series of comic books about the triple plants of Victor, Delta, and Dilter, which, of course, we were princes of. And then, of course, there were tales of plenty about the land of the teddy bears. Being a waddle, he believed that needed inanimate objects had souls and were treated as such. So this country was developed. It had its geography, it had its counties, its boroughs, and so on, and it had its elections. Uh, it had a monorail system that ran around the back of our garden, and uh, it had other political events such as the bear dip instead of the budget, the Ted election instead of the election. And uh, it was fought by the libero, the concert teddies, and labor. <laughs> no prizes for guessing which party always won the elections. <laughs> and when these events came round, we would build a TV studio out of cardboard and Lego and so on and so on with cameras and showing lights and scripts and so on and so forth. And the whole thing would be reenacted by a bunch of cloth toys moving around the place. Um, there are photos of this somewhere. Maybe they might appear today, but uh, if not, someday I'll, I'll dig them out. At school, he did incredibly well. He was a very academic and hard studying individual. He became the <laughs> gold medal of the Dutch as the best pupil in the school. <laughs> in his way. 
which is an example and an inspiration of how to manage the, the progress prize one year because I've been pulled out of the class by my mother who was my own teacher and teacher. <laughs> he was an example and an inspiration, but of course at the time I would never uh, admit that. We did draw apart somewhat in our teens as our different talents and where we wanted to be in life and so on became more apparent. Uh, but surprisingly, after this, we became closer and closer. Uh, we weathered the deaths of our parents, barely two years apart. <laughs> an incredibly early age uh, for them. It was ridiculous. And it was Ronnie who was there to look after our <laughs> mother. Um, <laughs> sad death as well. Uh, by which time I was in the arm and I was busy charging around the world. Also, while I was away, he would keep an eye on my own very young family. <laughs> Three boys are here today. And uh, he very quickly became their favourite Uncle Dobby. In his 20s, Ronald tackled a number of occupations uh, and dived into politics as a committed and much admired activist for the Len Liberals, uh, and of which I'm sure you're going to hear more about that. In his 30s, he discovered, as far as I'm aware, it wasn't in his 30s, he discovered the two great lice. Uh, loves that were to sustain him for the rest of his life, his wife, Sandra, and teaching. Teaching, my brother teaching, was a surprise. It was an oxymoron as far as I was concerned. Um, but he took to it like a duck to water. Uh, and I watched from a distance with increasing pride as he successfully pursued a career in some pretty ropey schools. Well, it's tough schools, ropey is probably the wrong word. Uh, in a career that basically would have scared me witless. He was Mr. Chips incarnate. Uh, to my family and I, he was always there to support and help. At one time or another, he's helped each of my boys in an important and fundamental aspect of their lives. And he was there when their father could not be. For his own family, he was wonderful father, papa. I've got to stray a bit into more than just his early life here. He was a wonderful father and papa, and I could only admire what I would call his gentle steeliness as he dealt with everything that family life threw at him. He crossed really into my own military world, but when he did, again to my surprise and delight, he always made an excellent impression and some instant friendships. Uh, indeed, I remember after a particularly raucous party in uh, an officer's mess in Hohen in Germany, I was always being asked if he would be returning for another visit. <laughs> Such a gent was something I heard from so many people. I never met anyone who did not like my brother, and as we grew older, we became closer emotionally, if only slightly geographically. Uh, as my time in the army ground on, I was sometimes surprised and moved to hear that he said something about his brother that suggested he also took pride in some of my achievements. Also, when we were together, to the annoyance of our family, particularly our spouses, he, he was the only one I knew who could sing the Tremola foam song, <laughs> the march from I was Monty's double, and cared that the music from the film Whistle Down the Wind was the crystallized fruit song. In the end, we never have enough time with those we love, especially if that love is still growing. I will miss him, but for me at least, I am proud to be the only person in the world who can say, Ronald was my brother, and I loved him. Thank you, Gordon. I think Brian's welcoming remarks, he said there might, we might even learn a thing or two about Ron today. I think more than a thing or two. Uh, even those of us who thought we knew him very well. <laughs> we now join together again in praise. Those who were at Ron and Sandra's wedding will remember we sang one more step along the wall that we go, and that's what we're now going to sing.
now going to invite what's in your order of service as the Grieve Boys um, to come forward and share some of their thoughts and memories of Ron with us. And Fraser, I think, is going to um, lead us off. I'm sure everyone could stand up here and tell a story about the support, help or kindness they've received from Ron over the years, about the guidance and advice he'd offered or actions he'd taken since this. He was a man who made the difference in everything he was involved with, from politics to the classrooms. You knew where Ron was involved because things just worked better. But let's not paint the gloss. He had questionable taste. <laughs> from the hip factory to novelty ties, from aqua to one-hit wonders. He liked music, it being something you always liked, uh, will forever be debated. And let's not get me started on cricket. Um, <laughs> although I did enjoy a, a good evening with him at the Oval just over a year ago. But that was much more about the company than the sport. <laughs> but as we gather to celebrate his life, I think of one verse. It's that of Kermit's nephew, Robin. Halfway down the stair is the stair where I sit. There isn't any other stair quite like it. I'm not at the bottom, I'm not at the top, but this is the stair where I always stop. Whether he is Ron or Papa, our memories of him, of his caring, gentle wisdom, give him a special place for all of us. Whether you were up or whether you were down, there wasn't anyone quite like him. I am sure his legacy will make the rest of our journey as meaningful as the part we had to spend with him. Um, Ron cared, he cared a lot. That caring spirit will forever live in our memories. I know these words are not as good as they would have been if he'd given his beady eye the, the chance to, to look over them. He truly was such an impact on my life as I'm sure he was for many of you. His counsel will forever be missed. Papa took me on my first cricket game and I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> Papa explained the rules to me on what was going on and I had, the, I, I had a great time. Papa knew lots of stuff. He could always tell me what bird it was that we saw. He used to tell me about all the places he has been, which was loads, and what, and what, and what he did when he was there. And he always, he always knew which way was north, anywhere, anytime. You could ask him and he would point north. How did he do that? I know this is a tragic time for all of us, but Papa would want us to carry on smiling and being happy because that that's what Papa was like. One of my earliest memories of Papa was him doing the flowers that bloom in the spring. This basically involved me sitting on his knee, getting bumped up and down, swung all around while he sang the song to me. I also loved going to the shop for Papa. We could always talk him in, get, we could always talk him into getting some extra stuff, and it wasn't always just for us. Lots of the time, we would convince him getting something nice for himself, including some CR7 pants and a new Partick Thistle scarf. <laughs> <laughs> Papa was always great for just sitting and watching TV and films with and this is one of the things I think I will miss the most I will also miss when we were younger how Papa would tell us these funny made up stories including all of us grandchildren and they were always different and were always really nice to have, to have before we ended the day I had so many good times with Papa and Aldo but one I'll never forget was when I was six or so years old, he would let me drive his car in the car park at Lanark Lock. <laughs> that wasn't very legal, and I'm pretty sure I wasn't very good, but I loved him all the more for letting me. Two years ago, Papa signed me up as a junior gunner, and he became a senior gunner. We went to a couple of games, West Ham 1-0 and Newcastle 2-0. Sorry, Uncle John. <laughs> and I'm really sad that we won't be able to go to more. But my first visit to the Emirates will have always been with you, Papa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Ron was first introduced to us in the autumn of 1989. It was a Sunday, and my mum said that some guy was coming for lunch. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> He'd seemed all right, and he very much enjoyed his lunch, and having a second and then third helping of the fish pie that was served. Two hours later, however, I think he regretted that, as we were on the waltzers at Strathclyde Park. <laughs> and he threw up his fish pie all over himself. But mercifully not us, he was considerate that way. I think it would have been a shock for anyone on meeting the Grieve family, this fully formed and quite chaotic family that he was about to join and become a valuable part of. I remember a few months later, after Ron had moved into our house in Gardenside Avenue, he come rushing in, came rushing in in a panic. Dick is dead, Dick is dead, he said. Dick was a local harmless-ish drunk, or character as he was described in the newspaper, who was often to be found in the street outside our house. We all knew him well and his habits, but Ron was still just learning this. And so he comes in and announces that Dick is dead. Oh, I'm sure he's fine, came the communal reply, but we could see that Ron was not convinced. So we all went out and through the tried and tested method of shouting and gently kicking, we were able to ascertain that Dick was not dead, but just <laughs> somewhat tired and emotional. <laughs> I often think this is one of the incidents that helped Ron understand his new position and helped him to accept, embrace, and indeed facilitate some of the madness and chaos in which he found himself. Ron was a very special man. He was compassionate, kind, and wise, amongst other things. It was these qualities that helped him to become an incredibly valued, much loved and now missed member of the family. From a personal point of view, he never tried to replace my dad, being smart enough to know that this was not what I wanted or needed. Instead, he became a different three-letter word. He was my Ron. And I, along with everyone else, <laughs> was so lucky to have him. Thank you for being my Ron. My most abiding memory from the first ever Scottish Young Liberal Conference, which I attended in 1976, is of a student called Ron Waddell, who, it seemed, was the proposer of at least every other motion or amendment on the conference agenda. <clears throat> the subject matter was diverse, but the content of each was undoubtedly radical. Indeed, it was a radicalism which never left him. Although we sat around the same table at party executive meetings, we didn't really get to know each other all that well until the early 1980s. And especially when we were sent to Copenhagen in June 1981 to represent the Scottish Liberal Party at the European Congress of Liberal Democratic and Reform Parties. I'm pretty sure it was Ron who suggested that we go on what he described as the wildest roller coaster in Europe in the Tivoli Gardens. It was wild, but looking back, I think it was when we got off, shaken, but on this occasion with the contents of our stomach still intact, <laughs> I think it was then that our friendship really bonded. It was a friendship which endured. I last saw Ron in June, when he stayed with us in Orkney on one of his regular visits to the St. Magnus Festival. It's a friendship which I shall ever, forever value and cherish. And it was during that time in Copenhagen that we discovered a number of things which we had in common. For example, a mutual liking for the operettas of Gilbert and Sullivan, the flowers that bloom in the spring. We wrote parodies of GNS songs for Scots Night at the annual Liberal Assembly, and that possibly foreshadowed Ron's creative abilities years later in the Lanark pantomimes. We also realized that we had had a very similar life-changing experience on the very same day in March 1957 with the birth of a younger brother. <laughs> and we discovered our mutual enjoyment for the idiosyncratic. On the final afternoon of that Copenhagen Congress, we took the train to Helsingor, caught a ferry to Helsingborg, whereupon we got off, turned around, and went back again. But we had visited Sweden 
and we'd added that to the list of European countries that we'd visited. And two years later, during the ELDR Congress in Munich, we went AWOL and traveled by train to Salzburg so that we could add Austria to the list. And it was in a very similar vein when the Liberal Assembly was in Flandidno in September 1981 that Ron, ever the transport engineer, said we couldn't possibly visit Flandidno without taking the tramway up the Great Orm. So at lunchtime, before the final session, we set off. And it was well worth the trip, but we cut it very fine indeed in getting back into the auditorium for the leader's closing speech. And so it was that seated in two of the very, very few remaining seats in the very back row, we heard the clarion call to go back to our constituencies and prepare for government. Now, these were heady days as we looked forward to the next general election. Ron was in line to fight the newly created seat of Strathkelvin in Bears Den, a promising prospect in his home patch. I'd been readopted to fight my home area of Dumfrieshire. But there was, however, a matter of negotiating seat allocations with the SDP. Ron was a member of the Scottish Liberal Party's negotiating team. And as he headed off to the crux meeting, it was evident that Strathkelvin and Bears Den would remain, would be in the Liberal column, but that Dumfriesshire would have to be given over to the SDP. To attend the meeting, which would determine our respective fates, however, Ron needed someone to take his Sunday school class at Bears Den South. Now, it must have said something about the strength of our friendship that in these circumstances, he asked me to come through and take his Sunday school class, and that I agreed. In the event, Ron came a much more than respectable runner-up in 1983. It was a new seat created by the Boundary Commission, and clever sophologists who worked out the likely result in the preceding election, had it been fought on these boundaries, suggest that Ron achieved a 14% swing from the Conservatives to the Liberal Alliance in the election where Margaret Thatcher had her biggest ever majority. As the then party convener, Ross Finney, said to me last week, he deserved to be the first Liberal MP for Strathkelvin and Bears Den. And although Ron never achieved elected office, the diligent campaigning, the sheer hard work which he and his team put in, surely laid the foundations for subsequent success the winning control of Eastern Bartonshire Council, and ultimately winning the parliamentary constituency. By now, Ron was working for the Scottish Liberal Party, and in 1985, he became the party's political director, later chief executive of the Scottish Liberal Democrats. As someone who liked roller coasters, his time in posts certainly had its ups and downs. An increase in the number of Scottish Liberal MPs in the 1987 election the subsequent challenge and turbulence of the merger talks, the disappointment of the 1989 European elections, and Sanders reminded us of the Glasgow Central by-election when I think in one of the opinion polls we got an asterisk because the pollsters hadn't found anyone who was actually voting for us. <laughs> Ron engaged in the first phase of the Scottish Constitutional Convention and had an active role in the victorious Concarden and Deeside by-election in 1991 and after which the Scottish Liberal Democrats emerged as the second largest group of Scottish MPs. And the leadership which Ron gave to the party headquarters in Four Clifton Terrace created a positive and happy working environment. He was even tempered. He was unflappable. Ray Grant recalls him keeping a tight rein on the party's finances in a small notebook, none of your spreadsheets. <laughs> and those who worked for him or worked with him didn't simply respect him, they well and truly liked him. On the 17th of March 1990, may have been the day when Scotland last won the Rugby Union Grand Slam, but more importantly it was the day when Ron and Sandra were married. It has always seemed that Ron and Sandra were so well matched, their characters and their traits complemented each other, and with Sandra having a strong political personality in her own right, they so readily sparked off each other. As we've heard, they often shared poetry. And visits to the family homes in Uddingston, Lanark, and more recently here in Mapperley, were just that. They were visits to a family home. Always enjoyable for stimulating conversation, for political banter, for the welcome, as well as for being well-fed and watered. And of course, 
As well as gaining a partner, Ron gained a family. And as Stuart has said, he didn't seek to uh, take the place of, of, the, of their own father, but he was a fatherly figure to Craig, Lindsay, Stuart, and Fraser. And those of us who were at Lindsay and John's wedding will remember the sheer joy with which Ron, which Ron exuded as they escorted Lindsay up the red carpet. And the speech, the joy he had when he made the father of the bride's speech at the reception. And as we've heard, he was a much-loved papa, a much-loved papa to Joy, Rosie, Louis, Iris, Angus, Rory, Freya, and Nico. He simply doted on these grandchildren. No conversation with Ron was ever complete without some report or update on their progress. And I know, too, how much Ron valued his bonds of kinship with Gordon and Kate and his nephews, John, Paul, and Stephen. It is those members of his family who will miss him most and whom we especially remember in our thoughts and prayers today. But to dwell on Ron's political life and achievements would only be part of the story. In 1992, he stood down from his party role and embarked on a new career in teaching and education, a career in which I believe he found real fulfillment. After teacher training at Jordan Hill, he taught in Motherwell, Les Mahego, and then moved to Firhill High School in Edinburgh. And it was there where his abilities were well recognized through early promotion to the senior management team, and where ultimately he became deputy head teacher. Some of those who worked with Ron at Firhill recall a colleague with a good sense of humor and with a sense of adventure. Memories of mountain trips and Duke of Edinburgh expeditions have been recalled. Another young colleague remembers a school trip to Paris when he convinced Ron to go on the Buzz Lightyear laser blast ride. <laughs> we had such fun, he said, and he even bought me the photo of us shooting aliens. <laughs> Another remembers being Ron's secret Santa one year, and one of the things he'd listed on the form was a love of glam rock kiss band. Now, I knew Ron had an eclectic musical taste. I actually thought Shostakovich was getting a bit far out. But glam rock, well, that was news to me. <laughs> anyway, his secret Santa created wrapping paper for the gift using a Kiss Band photo and photoshopping Ron's face on it. <laughs> and as you'd expect, he took it in good part. And the school librarian of the time remembers Ron as the deputy head who secured funding for the homework club and was always so supportive of that development. In 2005, he moved on from Fur Hill and into the Education Department of Edinburgh City Council dispel any idea that he became a pure and simple administrator. He became departmental advisor to the education convener, Marilyn McLaren. Reflecting on Ron's talents and contributions during that time of working together, Marilyn said he was super. She noted his great affinity with children and with young people, especially adolescents, how well he knew his way around the Edinburgh school scenes. She remembers his help with budgets as being especially important. He had a facility with figures and knew the right questions to ask. And it was a skill which he later deployed to considerable effect when he went back to work in the department as a whole. He was treasurer of the Glasgow Steiner School and shortly after he and Sandra moved to Mapperley in 2016, he took over the reins as head teacher of Michael House Steiner School. I can remember conversations with Ron at the time as he tried to turn around the school's fortunes. He brought tremendous energy and commitment to the task and to the school, something I saw for myself when he invited me to visit the school and talk to a range of pupils. But from these conversations, it was evident that he thought he was fighting an uphill battle against an Ofsted which had limited sympathy or understanding of schools which pursued an alternative educational approach. And his indefatigable commitment to education and to children continued to the end with his involvement in the local Phoenix Kindergarten. For recreation, in earlier days, he often went hill walking with Simon Strachan and put the worlds to right in Bothies. More recently, he enjoyed going to Nottingham for classical music concerts. He had a long-standing interest in cricket, as we have heard. Uh, he's recently taken out membership of Nottinghamshire County Cricket Club, and I remember one day at an oval in a rain-affected match, he tried to explain to me the, the Duckworth-Lewis Lewis, Formula, still none the wiser. <laughs> and he supported Partick Thistle. But a review of a life 
It's much more than a narration of events, people and interests. More importantly, it's about the person and the kind of person he was. He was someone with a keen sense of service, service to an engagement with the communities where he lived, his political activities in Bear's Den, his community involvement in Lanark, including chair of the board of the Clydesdale Community Initiatives, which focused on environmental projects and supported people with additional support needs to become involved in their community. And of course, his involvement with education here in this part of Derbyshire. And it's been striking just so how, just how many of the comments I've read or heard are so similar. Ron had a keen sense of humor. As a young liberal, he edited printout, which Simon Strachan described as a vehicle for poking fun, mostly ourselves, but in a way which contributed to a fun atmosphere in the party. And only once did Lord George Mackey threaten to sue. <laughs> you needed humour to survive life in the headquarters of the Scottish Liberal Party, dealing with members from all across the country. Humour, combined with diplomacy, which both Ray Grant remembers Ron deploying so well at Forklift and Terrace, and Marilyn McLaren remembers as being features of Ron's time in the Edinburgh City Education Department. And humour, too, with those who knew him well, not least when he and Sandra were on one of their numerous enjoyable holidays with Ray and James Grant. Ray recalls one occasion when a young lad from a neighbouring ap apartment joined them one night and told them that they were being discussed by his folks. Curious to know what was actually being said about them, the lad said, oh, you're the people who laugh a lot. <laughs> Other words have recurred. A wonderful, kind person, unflappable, a loyal friend, a man of integrity, Words from Fur Hill colleagues, a kind and compassionate man who always had time for pupils and staff alike. Such a kind and caring man who believed that everyone was capable of more than they gave themselves credit for, both pupils and staff. Although Ron didn't wear religion on his sleeve, he was a person of faith, a person whose commitment to public and political service was, I'm sure, based on being a follower of Jesus whose mission was to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free. And he was a follower of Jesus who not only promised life, but life in its fullness. And in his work in education, Ron recognized the potential in all with whom he came into contact and strived that, he might real that they might realize that potential. A life cut short all too soon, but a life which so very much enriched the lives of those who knew him and loved him. A, love, a life which enabled countless young people to live life more fully. A life which made a difference. May you rest in peace, my friend. We've heard lots of stories about Ron today. Some will have brought your own recollections and others will have taught you something new. From here we go and continue to remember. We continue to speak of Ron and allow him to be part of our lives in the way that he's done over many years. Now I'd love to stand here as a minister and say that I understand what this idea of eternal life is all about. But, well, the truth is, if I'm being honest, I don't. Well, not for certain. I believe that after this life, there's something more, a life of fullness and perfection, a life in which I believe will be with God and reunited with all those who have loved us and we have loved. However, I also believe that eternal life begins here and now. Ron may be gone from sight, but we still see him when we close our eyes or even when we glance out the corner of our eyes and see him sitting in his favourite seat or doing what he always loved to do. He may be gone from our hearing, but we still hear his voice when we're looking for advice or not, and we hear Ron share his thoughts with us or when we do something and we hear him share his opinion. You see, we might not physically see here or Ron right now, but we feel his presence and he remains part of our lives. And for me, that is eternal life. 
He lives on in each of you and knows he is touched throughout his life with his love, with his kindness, and his care. So today, and in the weeks and months that lie ahead, speak of Ron in the place he has in your family, as when you do so, he will live in your hearts, minds, and family forever. Take time now to remember. We've heard lots of stories, memories, and words today, but now I invite you to watch the screen and look at some of the memories the family have selected for us today. As they're accompanied by Yvonne and Alan performing Turn, Turn, Turn by the Birds, a musical setting of the passage from Ecclesiastes in the Bible. There is a time for everything. To everything turn, turn, turn There is a season turn, turn, turn And a time to every purpose under heaven A time to be born, a time to die A time to plant, a time to time to kill, a time to heal, a time to love, a time to weep. To everything turn, 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 there is a season turn, 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 and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to build up, a time to break down, a time to dance, a time to mourn, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together. To everything turn, 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 there is a season turn. And a time to every purpose under heaven. A time of love, a time of hate, a time of war, a time of peace. Time that you may embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. To everything turn, 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 there is a season turn, 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 and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to gain, a time to lose, a time to rend, a time to sow, a time for love, a time
prophet Ecclesiastes goes on in that passage to say this. What gain have the workers from their toil? I've seen the busyness that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it's God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before him. That which is already has been. That which is to be already is. And God seeks out what has gone by. So let us gather our thoughts together as we give thanks for Ron's life. Let us pray. As we remember Ron, let us recall that he lives on in the hearts and minds of those who knew him and loved him. May we hold on to him in our thoughts. There's no need to part from him too hastily. Let's talk about him often. Repeat the words and sayings he used and enjoy our memories of him. Let's remember Ron, not just for the events of his life or for what he did, but let us remember the person he was, a man of integrity, of fairness, of justice and love. And so will his memory live on in those he influenced through his life in so many different ways. So today let us give thanks to God for all that he was to those who loved him most and who miss him most. And especially we remember Sandra, Stuart, Louis, Angus and Rory, Lindsay and John, Rosie, Iris, Freya and Nico, Fraser and Tam, Joy and Stephen, Gordon and Kate, and all of Ron's family, as well as those whose lives were enriched through knowing him as a friend, a colleague, or a teacher. May we know the comfort which Jesus promised for those who mourn. And in gratitude, let us remember the inspiration, encouragement, love, and acts of humble service which Ron gave to those whose lives he touched in a myriad of ways as he followed the example of his Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we commit Ron into God's loving care, we give thanks for Christ's promise of eternal life and offer our thanks that Ron now knows the embrace of the arms of the everlasting Spirit of God and has heard the welcome home. Well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. And our final hymn, is I the Lord of sea and sky, after which, if you're able to, will you please remain standing.
Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever has faith in me shall live, even though they die, and no one who lives and has faith in me shall ever die. Today we have remembered Ron, and now we stand continuing to remember, but symbolically standing at a threshold of farewell. So let us go forward in peace. To love someone is to risk the pain of parting and the grief which we now experience is the honouring of our love. We honour Ron's life, his departure we accept and his memory we cherish. We know that the earthly life of our friend Ron Waddle has reached an end. And so in grief at his death, but in gratitude for his life and for the privilege of sharing it with him, we commit him into God's care and keeping. And we do so in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ who died, was buried, and rose again for us and is alive and reigns forevermore. Gracious God, by your power you gave us life. And in your love you are giving us new life in Christ. We have entrusted Ron to your safekeeping. In the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us and to bring us all to a joyful resurrection and the glory of your eternal kingdom. Rest eternal, grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Amen. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, but trust also in me. In my Father's house are so many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you so that you can be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. My peace I give to you, so do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Please be seated. Friends, can I thank you all for attending, both here in church and online as well. Can I remind you, if you are watching online, to um, complete an online memory card. And if you're here in the church, take your memory card and either leave it on the seat or take it down to the pub and hand it to the family there. And for any that are left here, we'll collect them at the end. Can I thank, um, on behalf of the family and myself, the Reverend Jan, Martin, and all of the team here at Holy Trinity Church for making us so welcome, and for all their kindness and assistance in the preparations for the service, and also thanks to the Bishop for her gracious authorization for Jim and I to lead this service for Ron here in the church. I know it's meant a great deal to the family to be welcomed so warmly into the church within their community. And as you leave today, the family have asked that we have a small collection if you wish to leave anything um, in Ron's memory to go towards the work and ministry of the church here in Mapperley, then there are plates at the door. Uh, please do that as if you are able. And also, there is much more to say there are many more stories to tell. There are rounds of the Macarena still to go. And you're invited to join with Sandra and the family back at the old Black Horse pub at the end of the service. Now, if, like me, you're worried as to which pub it is in the village, don't be. Um, it's really easy. Even I can find it. You go down the hill, turn to the left, and it's about the third building on your right. Please as well remember, if you wish to take a button, particularly some of our children and young people, you're more than welcome to do so at the end as a memory of Ron. And so inspired by Ron, by all that he has left behind, go with your thoughts, go with your memories, and go speaking of Ron and the place he has in your lives. As when you remember, so he lives on in your hearts, in your minds and in your family. And so today, know the blessing 
and peace of God with you, Father, Son, and Spirit, in the day and in the night, in times of darkness and in times of light, know that God is always by your side, now and forevermore. Amen.